So lids are a thing. In this video, we're gonna go through how to actually design lids well for mass production 3D printing, as well as the common ways of creating a lid. So you know all the different ways that you can have a thing attached to the top of another thing. Now the very first rule of making lids is that generally they are smaller parts. So please make sure you put chamfers on all the corners that are on the first layer at least, and make sure you round out any vertical corners on the part. This ensures that the part is as efficient to print and comes out with the highest quality consistently. Because when you're making 10,000 parts, there's a likelihood that something might go wrong and doing these very small design changes reduce the probability of those things going wrong, which reduces the cost for the client and improves the quality of the parts overall. So with that, let's get right into it. The first and most common type of lid is basically one that just presses onto the top. Now, many people make the mistake of making this an interference fit where just friction holds it together. That's not entirely the right way of doing it. You want to have something better than just a tube going over the top of a cylinder. So in order to design these correctly, the thing you want to do is actually add just the slightest sense of a chamfer into the part. That way, the lid definitely has a place to start where it can go on on very easily, get a little bit of engagement, and then depending on how tight the user wants to place the lid on, they can press until it's tight enough. This gives you also additional material because with these kind of friction fits, when they pop off and wear out over time, you have more and more material to wear away. Whereas if you had a pure cylinder in a tube, then once it wears out, it's completely done and there's no longevity to it at all. With these types of fits though, also you're restricted a little bit by layer height, because if you'd have a really coarse resolution on these parts, then those layers interlock with each other. So these friction fits can be very, very tough if you're not doing it quite right. So there are some tricks you can do with this in order to reduce the amount of surface contact between the two parts. You might add ripples to the interior or something along those lines, just so that you don't have too much contact. Now, those friction fits you kind of want to avoid because since they are a high tolerance part, the shrinkage of the material and everything else, it's tough to tune those. But there is one other version of this. Most people believe that the cap should attach to the outside of the part. That's not always true. Sometimes you can make a lid that's a plug. And with the plugs, you follow the exact same rules. Very slight chamfer to the outside of the plug so that it, you have a good interference fit. And if you want to reduce the amount of surface contact, you can go ahead and change the geometries a little bit for that. And of course, chamfer and fillet everything. Now, moving on to traditional type of mechanical attachments, threads. Threads are great. Make sure that you're always using a triangular thread, and ideally one that's at a perfect 45 degrees, because then you reduce the overhang and you don't have to worry about threads slightly sagging and therefore causing a really tight sort of fit. You might even not necessarily use like a default type of thread. If you're designing the lid and the container, you can design a custom thread by just using a coil or something to make sure that it has a good profile that is very useful and and manufacturable because again with 3d printing you have overhangs if it's less than 30 degrees from horizontal you may have some trouble with that being reliable and again when you're making thousands of these you want to make sure that the part is robust within the process as it can possibly be and with threads you can do the exact same kind of version as you did with the plugger cap either having threads inside of the container or threads on the outside of the container now, last but certainly not least, one of the more difficult to model, but one of the more useful to have, is basically what we're gonna call a nub and slide. But what you can do is you design a little nub on the outside of the container or on the inside, and then you have basically a channel that this nub locks into when the cap is pressed down and then twisted just a quarter turn to put on. This is really great because it's a great user experience because the user doesn't have to twist and twist and twist and twist or shove it on or any of the rest of it. It's very intuitive, very quick, and very easy. If you want this lid to tighten down, you can change that channel to have a little bit of an angle to it. You can also put in nubs inside of the channel to have it lock in place. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this. The main thing to be aware of with this design though, again, is overhangs. That channel either needs to be less than two millimeters deep, especially if it's on a curved surface, or you need to have a chamfer at the top of that channel. Otherwise you will have sag, especially on a curved surface where the first line down will basically try to pull across it. So make sure this is really reliable. Ideally, you would take the nub and the channel and basically just make them pyramids of each other, a very angled channel. 
that is a better way of getting it done. But that can take a lot more modeling depending on what your timeline is. Make sure that the nub has as much overhang protection as possible. Otherwise, you will have support going all the way from the base all the way up to the nub, and you could still potentially have a failure mode where that nub kind of sags. So make it as small as possible, make sure it is supported as much as possible, and then the channel itself make sure that it has no horizontal overhangs in it anywhere as well. So hopefully that gives you some context of ways of attaching lids to the top of parts. Like I say, this really optimizes the cost of the part in production and ensures that there is a better quality part coming out. Like doing simple chamfers and simple fillets and those kind of things can make such a big difference in the quality of the output that you receive. And when we're working with clients who are wanting 10,000, 100,000, 1 million parts, every single optimization, every single 1%, adds up to a bunch down the line. So you want to make every tweak that you possibly can in order to make sure that the parts you're making are as good quality and are made as efficiently as possible. Have a great day, everybody.